let's get you on your way with t tests today I have some data that I've already loaded into R commander by using um, the um, load Excel uh, function and we have um, the length of tooth growth by what type of supplement they were taking either OJ orange juice or just vitamin C supplement and here's a pre and post test uh, <clears throat> these are actually the same data just that's just been reconfigured um, I, I just wanted to show you something so, all right. So uh, we let's start with the uh, with the tooth growth. So we have uh, a sample of, in this case, it was probably mice that were given a choice of one type of um, vitamin C, orange juice, or just a vitamin C supplement in the form of a pill, and then they were measured to determine what their uh, tooth growth was. So um, <clears throat> we'll view that data set here in, in, uh, in our commander to make sure that it's good, and it is. Okay, I don't need to view it twice. And then we'll just get rid of it, erase that out of my output, because I'm going to show you how to save this output. So. Um, when I'm comparing two things, comparing the means of, of two things, I want to use a t-test. So the t-test is um, found here under our commander statistics. And then we come over here to means. and we have the choice to, to do either a single sample t-test or an independent samples t-test and what we want to do is independent samples <clears throat> so um, in order to do an independent samples t-test we must have at least one grouping variable and, and in the case of our um, data we had the type of supplement that they're on and then we have to have at least one numeric uh, variable um, and in this case it is uh, the response variable of length and then we have options uh, do we assume that there's um, a, a difference between the two of these um, no we don't have any any idea or really any any w way of, of testing it so we're assuming that 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 it's a, a, a two-sided test uh, we don't have um, we're going to assume equal variance and then we just click OK <clears throat> and then we get our output uh, <clears throat> which is a two sample t-test um, and it tells us the data which was length by supplement uh, with length as the um, dependent variable supplement as the independent variable t-score of 1.9153 58 degrees of freedom with a p-value of 0 0.06039 so um, <clears throat> my um, uh, answer to my null hypothesis is statistically no there's no difference between these two uh, methods of getting vitamin C at least as far as it as it goes with um, their tooth health or their tooth length so that is my t-test one my other data which is located over here in something called pre post is a pre and a post test study um, and again uh, it just simply is is the same uh, data but reconfigured a little differently 
Um, so we should get a, a, a little bit of a similar result. So, uh, but when we're doing a pretest, post test, uh, again, it's going to be a t test, and we're comparing the means. Again, we have this, the single sample t test, but let's ignore that and go for the paired samples. <clears throat> for our first variable, we want to always pick the variable that happens earlier in time. Uh, usually we call it something like the pretest, but it might be called something else in your data. And then we pick post test, and then we have some options. Um, <clears throat> if we have a hypothesis, an unknown hypothesis, then we would leave it two-sided. But we're going to guess that that um, the difference is going to be greater than zero, and um, um, meaning that um, um, uh, the the post-test has increased the the tooth length. So. Uh, we'll click OK. Now, be careful if if you if you're doing a uh, a pretest post test on something like number of cigarettes, you might want the difference to be less than zero by choosing this top one again because you're trying to get something to go down. This test is trying to get something to go up. So you have to you have to keep your statistical tests tied in with whatever your 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 research question is. And I click OK. Um, <clears throat> we can see in this setup uh, that we have a t-score of 3.30, 3.3026, 29 degrees of freedom, and then a p-value of 0 0.001257. Uh, uh, so in this case, we could reject the null hypothesis because we have a, a um, a, a, a um, single-tailed t-test, and I come back here to my my Salkind book, uh, which I, I can't show you here because I don't have that kind of technology. I suppose I could do, get my camera out here, but I'm not going to do that. And we go here to page um, uh, 37, and I have. Uh, a single one-tailed t-test. I, I find that that column. I got a 0 0.05 as my cutoff point. I have 29 degrees of freedom. So uh, 1.699 is my critical value. My t-score exceeds that rather handily. And of course it's also a significant test. So you can almost always assure that your when your p-value is significant at 0.05 or less, that when you go into your into your table, you will have exceeded the critical value. So, but it's always good to check as well. So, you have that done. You're happy, yay, because I have a significant test here. Now, in order to to get that data into um, um, a text file, you can you can copy and paste, but sometimes that acts kind of funny. Uh, I just like to save the output as a text file, uh, and I can save that in with my. Um, um, oh, we'll just save it in here with with, with my tooth growth. So, uh, tooth growth output dot txt, and there we have it. Let me go find tooth growth. And there it is, ready to upload, and um, and I can look at it and, and decide whether uh, you got the right answer or not. So that's doing t-test, pretty straightforward, pretty simple.